Kashmir. The name itself invokes a lot of geopolitical and religious thoughts and views and opinions. But putting all that aside, getting straight to the point, what has been the real history of Kashmir? A brutally honest and undisputable account about the ancient history and heritage of Kashmir. That's what you're going to see in the next couple of minutes. Let's get straight to the topic. If we dig deep into the archives of the British occupied India, almost like 150 years ago. Back then, the British authorities, through the Archaeological Survey of India, they conducted a survey, a survey about Kashmir, the ancient buildings and the temples in this region. The British did a very detailed examination of all these temples which were destroyed as part of the Islamic invasions. And they tried to reconstruct the plans, the drawings, and then the photographs of them. And then they compiled it in a book called as Ancient Buildings in Kashmir, published in 1869. That's approximately 150 years ago from now. And with these archives as our primary source, let us try to understand all the lost temples of ancient Kashmir. They say that a picture speaks a thousand words. The pictures of the ancient temples that you're going to see as part of this documentary in the next couple of minutes, they speak not just thousand words, but a million words. So I want to do this documentary a little differently. I don't want to talk much and let the pictures do all the talking. So let's get started. Just a quick note to start with, the photographs that you're going to see in this documentary about the ancient temples of Kashmir are the photographs taken by the British authorities back in 1868. So the shape and form of these temples and the state of them today might be a lot different from what it was 150 years ago, what you're going to see in this documentary. So the first temple is Meruvardhana Swami, built by Amatya Meru, dedicated to Lord Shiva. Location, Pandrethan. Pandrethan is a distorted pronunciation of the original name Purana Adhisthan, which means the old capital, Kashmir built in the period of 913 to 921 CE, that is 1100 plus years old. So this temple was in ruins when British was doing the archaeological survey around this temple. Number 2. Sugandheswara, built by King Shankaravarman of Utpala dynasty, location Pathan, Kashmir. Period 883 to 901 CE. Shankaravarman built the temple dedicated to Lord Shiva in the name of his wife, Sugandhi. Thus, the name Sugandheswara. Kalhana's Rajatarangini about all the dynasties in Kashmir is the primary account of all this information. And this temple is also desecrated and destroyed as part of the Islamic invasions of Kashmir. Number 3. Bhavani Mandir, dedicated to Ma Parvati. It is not known who built this temple, but interestingly, around 1200 years ago, this temple was unearthed in Kashmir by the king of those times. Location, Boniar, Kashmir. Number 4. Avanti Swami Temple, built by King Avanti Varman. Location, Avantipur, Kashmir. Period. 850 to 854 CE. Number 5. Shankara Gaureshwara. Again, built by Shankara Varman of Utpala dynasty. The same king who built Sugandheswara. He built two temples. One in the name of his wife, Sugandheswara, dedicated to Lord Shiva. And another temple as Shankara Gaureshwara, again dedicated to Lord Shiva and Parvati in his name, Shankara Varman. Hence, Shankara Gaureshwara. Location, Pathan, Kashmir, and period 1883-901 to 901 CE. Number 6. Jeshteshwara. Again, this temple, we don't know who built it, but the dating of this temple is 220-223 to 223 BCE. That's approximately 2,200 years old. And this temple is the oldest in the entire Kashmir. Dedicated to Lord Shiva and as usually desecrated and destroyed. But now, thankfully, it is restored. Number 7. Martand Sun Temple. Dedicated to Surya Bhagwan, Built by Ranaditya Varma. Location Anantanag, Kashmir. Period 490 to 555 CE. That's more than 1500 years old. 
Number 8. Sharada Shakti Peet. We don't know who built it. The location is in Neelam, Pakistan occupied Kashmir, and the period as well is unknown. But the antiquity of Sharada Shakti Peet is incredible. It is even mentioned innumerable times in the Puranas as well. So that speaks for itself. Number 9. Wangad Temple Complex. A group of temples in this area of Wangad, Kashmir. We don't know who built it and when it was built, but as part of the archaeological survey that British did, it has already been in ruins, terribly desecrated and destroyed. Number 10. Naranag Mandir. Location Naranag, Kashmir. Again, built by unknown, period. 220 BCE, that's approximately 2,200 years ago. The list is never ending, but this is what truth looks like. And this is what hatred towards other cultures and other religions look like. And this is what the damage that Islamic invasions have inflicted on Kashmir would look like. And this is what history would look like. And if we really want to correct our history textbooks, it cannot be done by just removing certain chapters on the invasions. Rather, it's all about including the truth. And this is what the real truth is. And I said, a picture speaks a thousand words, but these pictures speak a million words. I rest my case. If you are of the opinion that, bro, something has happened over a thousand years, fine, let's get over it. Let's talk about development, progressiveness, diversity, inclusion, etc, etc. So let me tell you one thing straight. Bharat has been a very diverse civilization all along. It has been a pluralistic civilization all along. And that is the reason you will not have as diverse country as Bharat, be it in terms of language, religion, etc. Of course, we have this disease of caste-based discrimination. Let's talk about it in a separate form. But coming to the current context, so let's take a small instance. I think everything would be clarified if you just think about that one instance. Take two people. Number one is General Dyer, who unleashed the massacre of Jallian Balabagh. And number two is Aurangzeb. Talking about General Dyer, no one looks at General Dyer as a Catholic or a Christian. He has been a brutal, he was a monster who unleashed Jalian Walabag. Now you talk about Aurangzeb, that invokes a lot of political and religious emotions even today. Not saying across the board, but it has reasonable political relevance and political convenience. Why? I want you to think about just this one question. Compare General Dyer and Aurangzeb. General Dyer does not have any political relevance while Aurangzeb is still having political relevance in Indian politics. Why? A commonsensical question. Ask for yourself and try to find an answer for yourself. Having said that, are we against any specific religion? Absolutely no, and that's not a motherhood statement. And I mean it. I don't care which religion you follow. You don't care which religion I follow. You and me should peacefully coexist in the society. That's all. This true God, false God, heaven, hell, believer, non-believer, these things should not disturb the harmony in the society. And unfortunately, a thousand year long reality is otherwise. I don't want to conclude the history about Kashmir on a negative note or a victimhood note. So let's turn around and understand the greatness of Kashmir in just two minutes. Ustamito vanastha Kashmira Pradeshe Prasiddho Murugakyaha. These words are said by Vasista Maharshi, Guru of Bhagavan Sri Ram, while writing Dhanurvedam, which is part of Yajurvedam. Vasista Maharshi refers to a species of deer that is exclusively present in the region of Kashmir. Kashmira Pradeshe Prasiddho. And Vasista Maharshi goes on explaining how to make a bow with the horns of this deer, which is indigenous to the region of Kashmir. The word Kashmir and this region has a very deep antiquity, all the way back to the times of Vedas, still being called exactly with the same name, Kashmir. Indians invented zero, the same boring dialogue on and on and on you get to hear all the time. But how many of us are really aware of the Bhakshali Sarada manuscript? This is the oldest written record about Bharatiya Ganitam in first hand. It is approximately 1800 to 2000 years old and this Bhakshali Sharada manuscript accidentally found an excavation and is written in a script native to Kashmir. And it explains the Bharatiya Ganitam or the Indian mathematics in a practical 
and a detailed manner. I made a detailed documentary on Bhakshali manuscript. You can check that if you're interested. But getting to the topic, let me pull out a very interesting fact in our current context. We use symbols for arithmetic operators, right? Plus, minus, so on and so forth. So when was this culture of using symbols for denoting an arithmetic operation came into existence? So these are very interesting basic questions that opens up a world of a different kind of research, I would say. It has been a very fascinating journey for me all along. And here is a small fact that I would like to share with you. As part of Bakshali manuscript, how two numbers are subtracted was explained. Don't get carried away by the plus symbol that you're seeing. It is not addition, rather it is subtraction. And this plus is not a plus, it is a Samskrutam letter Ka. And the meaning of this Samskrutam letter Ka is to reduce. So that is the reason three Ka eight. That means three minus eight, that's equal to five. Interestingly, the arithmetic operation of subtraction was flipped the other way around as part of this Bhakshali Sarada manuscript. And this manuscript is the oldest written record in the whole world for also the usage of zero in calculations. It's a fascinating subject altogether. Written in the script called Sharada. The script what you're seeing on the screen, it's called as Sharada. Kashmir also holds this incredible heritage when it comes to linguistics. Samskritam has always been named after Goddess Saraswati. The oldest known script of Samskritam is called as Brahmi, a name of Saraswati Devi. And the next generation of the script which evolved from Brahmi is Siddhamatrika, again name of Saraswati Devi. And from Siddhamatrika came Sharada script, what you're seeing on the screen, also in the name of Saraswati Devi. The reason I quoted about Dhanurvedam and Bhakshali Sharada manuscript is both these facts quickly establish how deep the antiquity of Kashmir has been and how rich the scientific heritage of Kashmir has been. We did not even scratch the surface. But if we get to the depth of how Kashmir has been the highest seat of knowledge in Bharat, that line of research opens up certain fascinating aspects about the greatness of Bharat. So that is the most unbiased and undisputable account about the lost temples of our ancient Kashmir. And let me get this straight and blunt one more time. If I destroy and desecrate the holy places of another religion, then there is nothing holy about my religion to start with. And most importantly, the truth should never be subverted, no matter for political convenience or for any other material reasons. The truth stands high above all of us. Concluding it in the words of Swami Vivekananda, here is what he says. Truth does not pay homage to any society, ancient or modern. Society has to pay homage to truth or die. Societies should be moulded upon truth and truth has not to adjust itself to society. That is the bottom line. And as always, thanks for watching.